Good evening. Welcome to another conversation at the table. I am Chad Bresson. I am the pastor at the table of Los Fresnos. And thank you so much for joining us this Saturday evening. This evening we're tackling another myth buster. It's Saturday and that's what we do on Saturdays. It's hard to believe this is myth buster number eight. <laughs> Are you serious? We've been doing this for eight weeks. Uh, hard to believe. Now, some of you can say, yeah, I believe it's been eight weeks. It feels longer than that. It feels like it's been all year that we've been sheltering in place. So we're going to get to our myth buster in a second. First of all, how are you doing? How was your Saturday? An absolutely wild Saturday here in Los Fresnos. It started off uh, at around 8.30, 9 o'clock this morning. Thunderstorms, uh, easily the biggest storm of 2020 in terms of the lightning and the, the wind and, and all that and the rain. Uh, just unbelievable. got dark. It was almost like somebody turned the, the sun off. got dark and, and did that for about an hour. And by noon, sunshine. <laughs> As if it never happened. No, you could tell it happened because it was quite steamy. It was quite, quite a bit of a sauna. So anyway, that's how it got started. In fact, by the way, there was, if you've probably seen the news, uh, lightning hit a condo complex out on the island, the SPI, and started a big fire there. And I uh, haven't, haven't seen the latest. I hope everybody is, is safe out there, but certainly a lot of destruction from the lightning. And from the looks of it, looks like we've got rain again. So sun, uh, rain, sun, rain. This is Texas. Anyway, also spent some time this morning on a fantastic Zoom call with uh, rotary people around the valley. Uh, in fact, all of the deep south Texas, Corpus and south. And the really cool thing about that phone call this morning, about a couple of hours, was sitting listening to all the really neat things that people are doing for each other during the pandemic. Uh, so in spite of all the, the bad news that is happening out there, certainly a lot of good news, a lot of neighbors helping neighbors. That was really fun. And so that was also part of my Saturday. And uh, so anyway... Uh, some good news with the bad news. Tomorrow, before we get to our Mythbuster, tomorrow we're going to be in our driveway. So if you can, if you're here in Los Fresnos and you can't, show up. We're going to just spend some time chatting. It's a chance to be face-to-face -face with each other, uh, see how each of us are doing. Uh, again, we're not going to have coffee. We're not going to have food. We're, we're not going to have communion. Uh, but we're, we're going to get together in, in our driveway, 1030 tomorrow morning. If you can't make it, I encourage you, join us online, Facebook or YouTube, for our online service at 1030. And tomorrow, we will be looking at Moses in quarantine. Again, we're continuing our quarantine series. And so tomorrow morning, 1030, we'll be online with Moses and quarantine. So, uh, conversations at the table. Again, this is Saturday's edition. If there's something you'd like us to tackle here, uh, send it, you know, leave your comments here and send it our way and, and we will get to them. Today's Mythbuster, it's one of those that is just rife with landmines, so <laughs> it's one, of, it's again, it's one of those verses I don't necessarily relish taking on, but again, it just gets used and abused and taken out of context so often. Uh, and, and it happened again last week, I saw it, in fact, when this whole thing started apparently eight, nine weeks ago, according to my calendar here, I saw this verse being used in relation to the pandemic, and I was just like, well, of course. We're going to use it for all these other things in life. We're going to use this verse for the pandemic. This verse has been used for quite a few things uh, to which it does not relate. If you look at, and I do like these fun lists, if you look at the lists that people compile, like at... Uh, at UVerse and some of these uh, Bible sites that you find online, the, the most looked up verse or the most quoted verse of 2019, they've got these lists every year at the end of the year. And every year, this verse is in the top five. Last year, it was the first one, obviously, is always John 3.16. And then the second one, Jeremiah 29.11, we dealt with that Miss Buster a, a couple of weeks ago. And the third one, I think, is comes from Psalm 23. In fact, uh, the top 10 are dominated by Psalm 23, and that for good reason. But this comes in at number four. Our verse is from Philippians, the fourth chapter, the 13th verse. 
Philippians 4.13. And that's where we find Paul saying, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. And it may be one of the most misused verses in all of the Bible, if not the most misused. And of course, this verse was super, super popular about 10 years ago because it showed up in the eye black of a certain quarterback from that other university in Florida who credited the verse with helping him score touchdowns. <laughs> I had to wonder, though, when that same said quarterback threw a miracle pass against the Pittsburgh Steelers, which was a very good thing, by the way. I was very glad that that happened. Uh, I was wondering, though, when that happened, what about my Christian brothers who are on the Pittsburgh Steelers squad? <laughs> Can they not also claim this verse, you know, as he's torching them for a touchdown at, you know, in overtime and winning the game? <laughs> Uh, why do Christian brothers and the Pittsburgh Steelers not get to claim that verse? You know, that Pittsburgh secondary was out of position. They got beaten deep. What about those guys? If they're Christians and they're reading this verse, don't they get to claim it too? Is Jesus only there for the winners? <laughs> uh, does he get more glory in the winner's locker room than he does the loser's locker room? You know, did Jesus all of a sudden decide that he was not going to be there for Big Ben and Troy, who, by the way, are also considered to be Christian brothers uh, and, and love Jesus? Uh, was he not there for them when that touchdown happened and ended their season? Uh, is Jesus there for the quarterback uh, and not for the guy who loses his job because that secondary was out of position? <laughs> I mean, that problem is the place to start when we start looking at these kinds of mythbusters, and especially this verse. And just like many of the other verses in the past week, the place we're going to start here is, is that this verse is not promising material blessings. It can't be used to say, Jesus is helping me score touchdowns over against others who are being defeated in, in that particular, you know, Jesus is not taking sides here. So the very first thing that we can say about this particular verse is it does not promise material blessings. And again, if that sounds like a drumbeat over the past few weeks, as we consider these verses that are being taken out of context during this pandemic, uh, then that's it. Jesus is not promising material accomplishments through this verse. It's not promising blessings on all of my activities. The Bible does not promise that God is going to do X, Y, or Z for us material ways, especially if we do something for Him. Again, going back to a recurring theme here, God is not a vending machine. He is not a vending machine in which I push a button and then obligate Him to give me something out the bottom. You know, <laughs> if I'm, you know, if I push that button and I'm putting my two quarters in and I'm or these days, four quarters, five quarters, looking for that Pepsi. I'm, you know, it's not a Bible verse that, you know, punch that button and expect and obligate God to give me that Pepsi. So God does not work that way, especially when it comes to one person's blessing at the expense of another. And in this instance, scoring a touchdown versus somebody who loses their job because of that touchdown. Um... Does God give us material blessings? We should, you know, we at least should say that. Yes, He does. Absolutely. But it's all grace. It's all grace. He gives us good things because He gives us good things. Not because we are any better than anybody else, or I have any more faith than anybody else, or I'm doing things better than the next guy because I have my act together. No, God gives us material blessings because He gives us material blessings. He's not a vending machine. That also gives rise to something else we said last week, something that, again, as we come to these kinds of passages in the Bible, we start reading our Bibles and we open Philippians 4, and we're going to read Philippians 4, and we're trying to understand what's going on in Philippians 4, and then understand how I'm to apply, or how it shapes my thinking, how it applies itself to me. First of all, this is not a promise. It does not occur in promise form. This is not God saying, I will do this for you. Or you will do this because I have done this. I mean, that's the promise form that we find in the scriptures. This is not occurring in a promise form. This is Paul making a certain comment about his own circumstances 
and encouraging others to think the same way or do some of the same things. We're going to get to that in a minute. But this is Paul commenting about his own life and how things are going for him. So it, it becomes a very dicey thing when we read stuff like this and then claim a promise based on something that Paul is uh, saying about himself. Now, does this mean that what is true for Paul is not true for me? Not necessarily, but I'm just saying we have to be very careful before we come to texts like this and then attempt to extrapolate or pull out some sort of a promise for me in my situation. So, again... Just dealing with that. So there's a couple of things, though. Let's go to the circ- let's go to the context because we're myth busting, and we're going to the context. And first, this may be the most obvious thing that we can thing that we can say about the context of this particular verse. Does this verse say, "I am able to do anything through Him who strengthens me"? Now that may sound like we're saying the same thing, but that's the way this verse typically gets interpreted. It does not say, I am able to do anything through him who strengthens me. It says, I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. And there is a difference. And we're going to get to this in a moment, but it's it's not saying anything. It says all things. And there's a reason why it says all things. But this cannot be used as Paul's version of a Disney mantra or a Disney ideology. And that is, here's the way it typically gets read. I can do anything through him or through Christ who strengthens me. Which means you can do anything you put your mind to. And oh, by the way, Jesus is going to give you the strength to do anything you put your mind to. It's not what this verse is saying. This verse is not saying I'm able to do anything I put my mind to because Jesus has given me the strength. It's very easy for us to substitute the word anything for all things. And that's how we typically are wired to paraphrase. But we've got to be very careful because if we do that, all of a sudden we're starting to pull it away from its context. This all things has a context. By the way, that is true for the all things that occur throughout the scriptures. Those all things, again, not always universals. It's very easy for us to read universals into that. The all things have context. When we're reading all things, like right here in in Philippians 4, think of it as a restrictor plate on a NASCAR, in a NASCAR car. (laughs) A restrictor plate. You know, it's all things has a context, and we have to make sure that the all things stays in that context before we extrapolate or pull out to mean anything and everything based on whatever it is we want to read into it. So, all things is not anything. That's the first thing. Now, what do we say about all things? That's the second thing. All things is tied to what Paul's immediately talking about in the immediate context. And just what is that context? Well, the context is another all phrase that appears right here in this context. Paul's in jail when he writes Philippians 4 in the book of Philippians. It's a letter from jail. And he's totally grateful for the church at Philippi and all the help that they've given him. Listen to what he says. Here's the context for this, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Here's the context. starts with verse 10. I rejoiced in the Lord greatly because once again you renewed your care for me. You were in fact concerned about me but lacked the opportunity to show it. I don't say this out of need for I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. I know both how to make do with little And I know how to make do with a lot. In any and all circumstances, listen to that, in any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content, whether well-fed or hungry, whether in abundance or in need. I am able to do all things through him who strengthens me. So all things, in context, is connected to all circumstances. They are parallels. Paul is able to go hungry or be well-fed through Christ who strengthens him. Paul is able to make do with a little or make do with a lot through Christ who strengthens him. 
Paul is able to be content with abundance. He is able to be content with dire need through Christ who gives him strength. And that's a far, far cry from being a promise. Paul can do anything through Christ who strengthens him. Because that's absolutely not what's happening here. Paul is content in all circumstances, good or bad, because Jesus is giving him the strength in all of those circumstances. But there's also a broader, there's even a broader context to even this little piece. The reason Paul lingers here on being content with things that are going on in his life, being content with the circumstances, even in jail, is because he's writing into a specific situation here to the church in Philippi that could learn a thing or two about being content, about dealing with bad circumstances. Paul's prison context in this passage is part of a context in which he's writing to two ladies who can't get along. They can't get along, and his gospel ministry and the gospel ministry of Philippi is being affected. He's writing to Yoda and Syntyche to get along, and in writing them and telling them to find ways to get along for the sake of the gospel. And along the way, he also writes this to them. Listen to the language here. In another verse that typically gets taken way out of context, verse 8, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any moral excellence, if there's anything praiseworthy, dwell on these things. What things? The things between these two women. Whatever is true, whatever is honorable, if there's any moral excellence, if there's anything praiseworthy, think about that about the other person. Dwell on those things about the other lady. Whatever's just, whatever's pure, think the best about the person you can't be reconciled to. Think the best about them. Whatever's true, honorable, just, dwell on these things. These women who can't get along are being told to think about the best of each other regardless of the, how the disagreement started. So, dwell on these things. And if those ladies think it's impossible, they need to take if, if they think their relationship is impossible, if they think they can't do verse 8, if they can't think whatever's honorable, pure, lovely, of moral excellence about the other lady, they need to take a cue from Paul who says, "I can do all things." Through him who strengthens me. So, again, what are all things? All things are whatever's true, whatever's honorable, whatever's pure, whatever's lovely. Those are the all things. See, we can think the best about others because it's Jesus giving us the strength to do it. Because believe me, if I'm left to my own strength, I'm not going to think the best about the other guy. I'm not going to think about the best about the other person if it's left to my own strength. And this is Paul saying, look, Jesus gives me the strength to be content in any circumstance, the good circumstances and the bad circumstances. And if Jesus is doing that for me in my circumstances, he can do that for you in your own circumstances that lack reconciliation. He can give these ladies the strength to think the best about each other. Jesus is doing, Jesus is in the business of doing the impossible. Jesus is in the business of healing broken relationships through the gospel. And that's the hope in this passage. When we tend to overlook the remarkable thing about this passage isn't scoring touchdowns. <laughs> the remarkable thing about this passage is the hope for broken relationships. Paul's expressions of confidence in the gospel is that the gospel has everything that these ladies need to get along. Hope for broken relationships. I mean, why not? If I take verse 8 seriously, if I begin to think the best about the other person, and the other person begins to think the best about me, well, then reconciliation isn't too far behind. Chances for reconciliation improve exponentially at that point. Again, not a promise but an expression of hope. We can do all things pertaining to reconciliation through Jesus, who gives us strength. Because whatever the circumstances I find myself in, whether it's good or bad, whether I'm hungry or fed, I'm always content. 
whether things are going great, whether things are not going my way. I'm always content. Jesus is always there. He is always there giving me his strength, giving me his life, giving me his forgiveness, bringing me back to the gospel. Again, not to score touchdowns, but to share in the ministry of the gospel. He does this for me so that I can do this for the other person. That I can bring the other person into the gospel. Everybody that I come in contact with is a potential for bringing them into this very same forgiveness that I have. This very same life, this very same strength found in verse 13. It's for them. It's for me through Jesus. So, that's today's Mythbuster. Our conversation at the table. So, <laughs> join us on Facebook and on YouTube tomorrow morning. We will have our online service at 1030. If you can, join us in my driveway at 1030 as well. And uh, again, I encourage you, whatever happens tomorrow, make sure that you worship online somewhere with, some, you know, with someone in Los Presidents again. The multiple churches providing online services. Find one, pick one, and join them. You need it. I need it. <laughs> online church tomorrow. Until tomorrow, stay safe. You know, stay healthy. Stay home as much as possible. And stay connected. We are loved by Jesus for the love of those presents. You have a great Saturday evening.